As a designer, you find yourself dragging and dropping icons out of Photoshop on a daily basis. Of course, we all know that this is time consuming. Did you know there is a way you can create and save your own custom icons inside Photoshop which will save you a lot of time? That is exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. Let's get started. Alright, welcome back guys, I hope you are doing great. So the first icon we'll be creating is the Facebook icon. Let's start by selecting the ellipse tool. Then just click here and drag to create a perfect ellipse by holding the shift key while dragging like so. Now let's add some text. I'll transform the text by pressing Ctrl plus T and then just scale it up like so. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to convert this text into a shape layer. To do that, I'll right click here and then choose convert to shape. Now to edit this individual anchor point, let's switch to the direct selection tool or the white arrow. Then I'm going to use it and create a marquee around this portion like so. Now only these two points are selected. I'll then hold the shift key and hit the up arrow on my keyboard. Then I'm going to double click on this thumbnail to change the color of the font. I'll just make it this color. Then with the shift key, I'm going to click here to select these two layers. Then press the V key to switch to my move tool and then I'll click here and click here. Now everything is center aligned. The next thing I'm going to do is to subtract the text layer from the shape layer behind. So with these two layers selected, I'm going to right click here and merge them. Then switch to the path selection tool and select the front shape here. Now click on the path operation on the options bar and choose subtract front shape. Click again here and choose merge shape components to make it one piece. To make this a custom icon, select any shape tool. Right click and choose define custom shape. Give the name and confirm it. Then let's delete the layer. Let's say we need to add that particular icon back on screen. To do that, you switch to the custom shape tool. Click here on the options bar and as you can see, here is the icon. I'm just going to select it and just click and drag like so. To make it proportional, hold the shift key. The good thing about this is that you can define a custom stroke and a custom fill. So we know Facebook is blue, so I'll just click here and pick a blue fill. The next icon we are going to create is the Instagram icon. So let's delete this one. I'll start by switching to the rectangle tool and I'll just create a square by holding the shift key while I drag. As you can see on the heads of display, both the width and height are the same. I'll change the fill and I'm going to duplicate this rectangle. But before I do so, let's click here on the properties panel and as you can see, we can be able to round the corners. Just highlight one of these values and input 72. Because we have the chain icon here, if I confirm this change, it is going to be validated or thrown. Now let's duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl J. Now let's transform the copy. While transforming, hold the Alt key to transform from the center. I'm going to subtract this front piece from the back shape, but before we do so, let's make a copy of it. Now I'll select this one, hold the shift key and select the first rectangle we created, then I'll right click and merge those together. Then I'll hide the topmost copy. Now with this layer selected, I'm going to switch to my path selection tool and select the front shape. Then I'll click on the path operation on the options bar and choose subtract front shape. I'll click again here and make everything one shape. I'll enable the shape at the top. Now I'm going to scale it down. And while scaling, I press and hold the Alt key, that will be the Option key to scale from the center. Then confirm the transformation. And again, let's make everything one piece. So I'll select these two layers and merge them. Then on the Options bar, I'll choose Combine Front Shape and also choose Merge Shape Components. Now let's choose the Ellipse tool. I'm just going to click inside here to create an ellipse just like so. I want it to be a perfect circle, so I'm going to hold the Shift key. To make it stand out from the background, I'm just going to double click on the thumbnail and pick a custom color. Now let's make sure everything is aligned. I'll select these two layers, 
press the V key to switch the move tool, click here and click here. Now with these two layers selected, I'm going to right and merge them. Alright, then let's switch the path selection tool and select the front piece. Then let's click on this button on the options bar and let's choose subtract front shape. Let's click again here and merge the shape components. Now as you can see, we were supposed to create a duplicate of it, but that's not a problem. We can always pick the ellipse tool and click somewhere around here, hold the shift key to create another ellipse just like so. To align it to the center, I'll select the two shape layers here. Then with the move tool, I'll click on this button and also click on this button. Then I'm going to right click and merge those two shapes together. Then with my path selection tool, I'll click on the options bar and merge the shape components. Now we need the last ellipse to position it here. So with the ellipse tool, I'm just going to create a smaller ellipse here. Hold the shift key to make everything proportional and scale it down just like so. I'm going to give it a different color, so I'll double click on the thumbnail here. Then with the move tool, I'm just going to move it towards this corner, like so. And let's merge everything together and subtract this front piece here. To add this to our custom shape collection, let's switch to any shape tool. Right click and choose define custom shape. I'll just call this one Instagram and hit OK. And let's delete the layer. If I return back to my custom shape tool, we'll find the new shape right here. I can be able to click and drag, then hold the shift key to make it proportional. And on the options bar, we can click on the fill and make it gradient fill. And then we can choose any custom gradient like this one and then modify the angle just like so now sometimes to create shapes you might need a reference for example i need to create the twitter icon for that i'm going to drag an image of twitter icon into photoshop as you can see i can't be able to use this logo because of this background so we need to create a custom logo based on this design so i'm going to switch to the pen tool then on the options bar, I'll click here and choose shape since I want to create a shape. I'll remove the fill and make it a black stroke. I'll just take the thickness of the stroke to one pixel. Then I'll trace around this shape. I'll start by clicking somewhere around here and dragging just like so. The reason I'm clicking and dragging is so that I can bring these control handles. Now, before watching this video, I assume that you have some basic knowledge about the pen tool. If you are brand new to the pen tool, I've made a thorough video explaining how to use the tool. I'll leave it down in the video description. Now, as you can see, the head portion here is very curved. So, we need a control handle that is going to define how curved this segment is going to look. And we also need another control handle here. To do that, I'm going to hold the Alt key. Just click here from the last point I click and drag it this way. As you can see, I'm able to bring this control handle which is going to be used to define the curve section here. I'll move it to about this location and then just come here, click and drag. As you can see, I almost got it right but we need to adjust it somehow here. For that, I'll hold the Alt key and just click and adjust this portion like so. Now everything looks great. Then what I'm going to do is to go here on the options bar and change the fill to this color and remove the stroke. To convert it into a custom shape, let's select the shape we have just created and grab any shape tool. Then just right click on it and choose define custom shape. Now as you can see even on this new document, I can always switch to my custom shape tool. Then on the options bar I click on this little arrow. And you can see the new shape has been added here. I can just double click on it and click here to draw. Then always hold the shift key to make sure everything is constrained proportionally like so. And on the options bar, let's give it a fill and make it no stroke. Now we have a nice Twitter icon like so. I'm going to delete these two layers. And the last icon I need us to create is the LinkedIn icon. Let's start by switching to the ellipse tool. And let's just click here to create an ellipse. Hold the shift key to make everything proportional like so. Let's click here and make it this color. 
and make it no stroke. Then with the text tool, I'm going to change the font to Monstrat. Then I'll just click here and type in lowercase. Then I'll transform the text by pressing Ctrl T and scale it up. I'll confirm the transformation and of course it is always a good thing to align the items. So let's shift click here and then press the V key to access the move tool then just click here and click here. Now that everything is aligned, let us select the text layer. Now with the text layer selected, we need to convert it into a shape layer. So let's right click here and choose convert to shape. Now that that is done, I'm going to shift click here to select these two layers. Then I'll right click and merge them. Now with the path selection tool, we can be able to select just the front text. And on the options bar, we can choose subtract front shape. Now we have a LinkedIn logo. Let's click again here and choose merge shape components. The reason this is so important is so that you can be able to merge all the components of that shape together just like what the name says. Of course, black is not a color from LinkedIn, so I'm going to click on the fill on the options bar and pick a color that resembles their brand color, which is this one. Now to add this into our custom shape or custom icon library, I'm going to select the ellipse tool so that I can be able to right click and choose define custom shape with the layer selected. Alright, now I will switch to the custom shape tool and click on this button on the options bar. As you can see, I took some time to put all these icons into one group. The way I did that was selecting all the icons and then right clicking on them and choosing new shape group. Now sometimes when you create icons like this, you might actually want to share with your friends or even sell them online. And before you can do that, you first need to export these icons into a given folder. To export the selected icons, click on the gear icon here. Then as you can see, we have export selected shapes, but for some reasons it is grey out on my machine. Hopefully it will work in your own case. Just click on this option and navigate to your hard drive, create a new folder and save all the icons there. You can be able to share it with your friends or even sell it on your website. Similarly, if you have some icons, you can click on this button to import them inside Photoshop. So as you can see guys, creating icons and custom shapes is very easy inside Photoshop as I have demonstrated. I hope you find this video helpful and if you did, kindly subscribe and give us a like. Take care and I'm going to see you in the next one tomorrow. Good luck.